I know, you've been waiting months to see this. Finally, I'm gonna show you how to make an automatic timing circuit for the Ego Box. What is up everyone, Man Bun Metal here. About six months ago, I released two videos showing you guys how to make an Ego Box with lights and fog. And now, I'm finally gonna show you how to make this circuit. Before you keep watching, you should have some experience with electronics. I won't be teaching you how to solder, read a circuit, or put together a breadboard. I can barely do it myself. Also, this footage is about six months old, so bear with me. Before I get started, about once a month, I release a video on guitar or recording gear reviews, tips and tricks, techniques. So if you want to hear more about that, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. All right, here we go. I designed a circuit, um, well, I stole a circuit. I <laughs> found one on the internet, a timer circuit, and went ahead and uh, designed the circuit. And I'm actually going to include a link uh, to the circuit. Um, they will actually include the circuit for this timer circuit that I ended up coming up with. Um, and actually, you haven't quite used it yet, but um, it, it should work. It'll work by the end of this video, I promise. And I also included the circuit uh, for the basic Eagle box with all the lights and power and everything. So. Check that out if you guys um, need any circuit help. So before I go into doing all this, uh, making the circuit and whatnot, I'm gonna do a breadboard, so let's get that going. So here's the diagram for the fog timer circuit. Uh, basically, it's relatively simple. We have our timer right here. We have the relay that it's gonna control right here. The relay is just gonna get power and then close this circuit, which is gonna connect our pins two and three. Simple enough. So actually I got this circuit off of um, the internet, so I don't know exactly um, how it works, but the important parts here are, here's our switch that's going to connect uh, ground uh, and complete the circuit, and that switch is just gonna come uh, from the switches in our original circuit uh, from the lights. Uh, these two resistors, the 100K resistors and the capacitor, can't tell you why they're there, but uh, they are. And then up here is what uh, we're gonna use to calculate the time of our circuit. Uh, so we have a capacitor here, we have a resistor here and a, another resistor here. I do have this marked as 100K and one meg. This is actually supposed to be 150K and I'll get to that in here in a minute um, and how I did my calculations. So. Uh, if you had one resistor here, you would have a constant opening time. Uh, I want to have a variable time, but I also want to have a minimum opening time because if you have zero resistance, you're going to have uh, zero opening. So if we move over here to our timing calculations, uh, basically to calculate this, we take 1.1 times the capacitance times our total resistance, and that's going to give you our time. So my goal is to have about a five second opening time. So we do 1.1 times 680 kilo ohms times 0.68 microfarads, so that's 0 0.00000068. That's gonna give us 5.0864 seconds, so about five seconds. Now one second minimum is going to give us approximately 150 kilo ohms. Don't pay attention to this line, mess that one up. I'll fix that when I release this. Uh, so it's about 150 kilo ohms, and that's gonna give us about a 1.122 second uh, opening time. Now, I think the actual value is around 133K. Uh, so you can do something closer to that if you want or however you want to do this. Um, me on the other hand, I just have a 150K resistor lying around, so I'm gonna use that. Uh, and then our maximum with the one ohm potentiometer that I'm going to use. Uh, so we add in our 150 here, which I did not do. Um, and that actually is going to get us the 8.6 second opening time. So these are approximate numbers. I'll have to test it out and see how it works. So I'm gonna use this breadboard to test out um, my circuit. Um, this is something I made a while ago to test out some pedals that I was making uh, years prior. So I just had this breadboard glued onto this surface that has some connectors and switches, um, power. Uh, and then I mounted my potentiometer here. This is just a, a one mega ohm a potentiometer for a guitar. So to get this going, first thing I'm gonna do is install my timer circuit, and that's this little guy right here. We're just gonna go ahead and, there. 
Then we're gonna add in, uh, this is our relay, this here. All right, so we have those two components. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and populate the rest of the board in a quick fashion. So this is our basic circuit. Uh, I use the 680 kilo ohm resistor right there and that's gonna give us about a five second time. Now this relay is just going to uh, connect pins two and three together on my XLR connector. Um, so what I am going to do to test this out so I can actually see it is use an LED in the circuit to show that it is actually working. So once I close this circuit, uh, this power is gonna go through to the LED and light up. So I'm gonna use this wire as my switch, this here, and then once I plug this into ground, it will turn on this LED for a set amount of time, hopefully five seconds. Now I'm gonna go ahead and power this on. Give this a shot. So that was approximately five seconds, but what you can see here is this ground is still connected. So once I let off ground, like so I step off the switch, step back on, and it's gonna start up again. So that is uh, exactly how I want this circuit to work. Now, I'm gonna test out um, how we're actually gonna wire this up with our relay and our 150K resistor. And now we have our uh, potentiometer resistor in circuit. So I'm gonna turn the potentiometer all the way down. So this is just the 150K resistor and see how that does. So that was pretty quick. Go ahead and turn this all the way up. And there we go. That did feel a little bit more than uh, eight seconds. So that's it. That is where a circuit needs to be at. It works. I'm happy with it. Of course, through the power of editing, uh, I did this breadboard like a week ago. Um, so we uh, have it here and we're gonna go ahead and try it out um, to actually switch on this fog machine and see if that works. You notice there are some changes from uh, what I had previously showed. Uh, I have two LEDs here now. I have this red LED um, which isn't red yet. So this LED is actually just showing me that I have power. Um, and then this LED is going to be blue. That's gonna turn on when the switch is actually active. So I connected this switch up uh, to switch it on and off. Not the best thing, it's not a momentary switch, but it should work. Um, so I'll switch this on. You see that LED, blue LED come on. And then when it's over, it'll, the blue LED will come off. There it goes. Um, so we see we have, I don't know if that was four or five seconds or whatever, um, but I can adjust that again with my potentiometer. So all I need to do is connect um, my XLR connector that I have here with uh, the XLR connector on the back here. Now I used a um, male connector here because the female was on this side. If your machine is a different connector, I mean, you'll have to figure that out yourself or even how the fog machine will work. All I need is an XLR cable, which I happen to have right here. Now, be very careful um, when plugging in the uh, fog machine here because I, I shocked myself uh, once. Um, and the reason is, is uh, pin one is power on this. And the first cable that I use, the shell was actually connected to pin one. So as I'm grabbing the shell and plugging it in and probably touching something that grounded me, I got a little zap and uh, was not expected. It's, if you've ever been hit by 120, it's, it wasn't much, but it was, it's never fun. Uh, so be really careful. I would highly recommend taking an ohmmeter, measuring pin one to the case to make sure that uh, that's not connected. And as always, a safe bet is to turn off your fog machine before you go ahead and plug this in and don't touch the case. So we're gonna go ahead and plug the, that into the fog machine. Plug that in there to our connector. 
and we're gonna give this a shot. I'll turn the fog machine back on. All right, so now that I've got all this connected up, um, we can go ahead and uh, try this out. I'm going to turn that all the way down and hopefully um, this works. So here goes the maiden voyage of the automatic fogger. Well, that seemed to work. Um, and of course I have a ton of fog now. So now that I've cleared up most of the fog here, um, except that, and now that I've proved this out, I can go ahead and make my circuit. So I bought these circuit boards on Amazon. Uh, I put a link below, and they're essentially the same thing as my breadboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and essentially just transfer all of this um, onto this, and uh, we should be ready to go ahead and start putting this inside of the Eagle Box. Now here is uh, the finished circuit board. I did have every intention of showing you guys a time lapse of this, but it was a couple hours it took me and it was probably pretty boring. So pretty much the same thing as what we had here, except a little cleaner. Uh, I've got my timer circuit here. I've got my relay here, my two LEDs. And then um, what's different here, you see these uh, terminal connectors. Uh, so there's screw connectors so I can um, screw in some wires. And, and a couple of these, two of these are for the power. Two of them are for connecting the XLR connector to control the fog machine. Uh, two over here are for my potentiometer. And then the final one here is uh, for the ground switch, which is essentially just what the panels are connected to. So we're gonna go ahead and give this uh, one more shot before I go ahead and um, actually try it on the fog machine itself. All right, so to test this out, just gonna make a couple connections here. So my only power is what I have uh, mounted on my breadboard here. So we're going to put those in. The nice thing about these terminal connectors is uh, you can just wire these up really quick and easy. Uh, and then if you need to take care of them or take them out, then it's uh, pretty quick. Uh, so those are power my potentiometer gonna be over here and then this so I'm not gonna test out the actual fog machine yet a little minute uh, but that's where the fog machine is gonna go so we'll actually go ahead and wire those up and that's just my XLR connector here all right and for the switch uh, basically I just have to connect this uh, terminal to ground. Uh, I'm just gonna use a wire to do that just to test it out. So essentially all I need to do is take this wire here and touch it over to a ground, which is gonna be on this side for me, right over here. So let's give it powered up. Make sure I'm grabbing the edges of that circuit board. Don't wanna ground anything on the back or short anything out. So there is our red uh, LED connector. Let's go ahead and turn this potentiometer all the way down, touch the ground here, and then got a blue LED. Turn it up a little bit, see if it uh, changes the timing. And uh, looks like it does. So I think we're good there. So I think uh, we're ready to try this out um, on the actual fog machine. Well, that's it. If you want to see the circuit board in the Eagle Box, don't forget to check out this video here if you haven't already. And hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, Give me a like down there below. And if you wanna hear more about what I'm working on, like gear reviews, tips and tricks, techniques, that kind of stuff, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified whenever I have a new video come out. But hey, until next time, rock on. Oh.